Hey, wasn't the clothing person somewhere around here too? There's nothing. The man from Sintra, not yet. Not yet. Oh! Oh, it was all the way back here, but I accidentally went to the wrong Gwent person. Okay, that's fine. We can go there right now. I just thought we would do that Gwent because that person seems to be the same person who's giving us the clothing, but it doesn't really matter. Do we want to do another Gwent game right now, though? Uh, Probably not. I'll hold off on this person for now. I think it's because the Gwent, once you activate that quest, there's multiple markers, so I guess at some point I just went to the wrong one without realizing it. That's okay. Est est flux ah. in the veins of Tussauds. Taylor's workshop. Oh, I don't think we've ever been here before. Hello? Stealing all your supplies now. Seems like no one's manning the shop, so I guess I'll just help myself here. Oh. Hello, Pierre. Sacre bleu. It's a crime. <laughs> You're from the north. That's painfully clear. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> there is no excuse. There is but the need to outfit you anew. My salon stands open. Please come in. All jests aside, let me see what you got in your wardrobe. I'm more than willing, sir. So they have... Elegant Beauclair doublet. Oh, okay, maybe this works too. Courtier's doublet. This is what I wore to the other parties, right? Or not parties, but the Skellige funeral. And there was another party too, back in the main game, but I can't remember which one. In this case, should I just buy the Beauclair set then? Beauclair doublet? Beauclair boots? And then Beauclair trousers? Wait, these two look the exact same. <laughs> a little bit of a scam, but okay. Do we need a mask? I don't think so, right? Thanks. I think that's all I need for now. Ever your servant, sir. Right, so put on clothes that Anna Henrietta will consider appropriate for the soiree. If I put this on... Oh... It looks kind of like what she was wearing when she was undercover earlier. And then I guess we'll take off the gauntlets here? Like that? Ah, there we go, that counts. Okay, well, I just wanted to get the clothing for now. We don't actually have to go meet her right away. Especially because I want to go do some other stuff first. So what I'll do is, I guess I'll keep it in my inventory for now. It shouldn't be too heavy anyway. Cumulatively, it's like one unit of weight. That's fine. Thank you then. And the marker undoes itself. That's fine. For your Gwent? Maybe I'll come back here next time since we just did one. Thank you, though. I'll definitely be back. How many more do we have left anyway? About five or so? Master, 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 master. Yeah, why don't we go get the last piece of the Manticore armor? It's all the way out in the middle of nowhere, but I really do want to try and see if we can get some new armor now. Although I'm not sure what I would do about the dye in that case. Red again or another color? I guess we'll have to see. The Lake of Cleansing is all the way in the north here. The closest fast travel marker that we have to it would be... Moncron? And then I guess we'll just go upward. And then maybe we'll consider going downward for Night for Hire. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, I'm thinking about when we can get these three though. All right now? 
Is that a bit too much of a detour? Maybe I'll just get this one. Or maybe I'll just focus on this for now. Just go upward entirely. Where is my nearest fast travel marker? The grand place. If I keep going down the street here. Oh, here he comes. A hero. Gerard Dream. Thank you, thank you. No need for praises. So we're gonna go here. Anna Henrietta can wait. Even the Duchess has to wait. She's supposed to be all royal and all, but hey, you gotta work with my schedule here. Alrighty. The lake of cleansing is something that's religiously related, right? So, are we- should we be expecting some kind of religious happening there? Just like back in the hidden chapel, I didn't really think there would be hallucinations and stuff, but clearly there were. So this lake might be a bit special too. Hello bandits! Why don't we put on a bunch of stuff first? Hangman's Venom. And then the Coctions. I could go with the simple ones, but there's so many I haven't tried before. I want to give them all at least one try. Earth Elemental Decoction, Arrakis. I guess we can try Arrakis. Al Ghul. Maribor. Yeah, sure, sure, we can do all this. Catechin. Cockatrice. No, we're already at 78. Let's give it a go. Oh! You maggot bum freak! You killed him! You son of a tartmans! Oh god! Death comes for you this day! Doing poorly today! By the way, if you notice I sound a little bit different than usual, it's because I'm a little bit sick today. I'm feeling okay though, so that's why I'm still playing. If you've heard me say this a lot recently, it's because I'm saying this once on every game I'm playing right now, so... didn't quite go as successfully as I thought it would, but we did okay. Feeling a little bit off with the combat today, though. Maybe I'm a little bit rusty. More spoons? There are spoons everywhere. Wait, you know how spoons are kind of Gondro Dim's thing? I wonder if every single time we see spoons, does that mean that Gondra has been here? That's kind of a scary thought too. Journal written on Sowhide. Day 1. Philibert sent us to collect supplies from the Vassane farm. I stayed with most of the lads in camp as always, and sent a few to go strike a deal with a steward. Hubert Durrett's a reasonable chap, never gave us trouble about taking supplies before, so it seems we're in for an easy job. Not like hunting flying monsters or lying in wait for caravans coming down the road. Day 2. Nikolai and Pablo Gaffa have not returned. Something stinks and it's not my foot wraps. I'm taking charge and leading a group to see what's going on. If those peasants at Bassein have done something to my men, I'll reduce that farm to moldering ashes. Day 3. The farm's been demolished, but no sign of Pablo or Nikolai. We only found two hayseeds. I'll take them back to camp for questioning. Both howl like madmen and mumble constantly about some werewolf. They'll cool their heels in a cage for a while, 
Maybe get more talkative. And where the bum blazes are my men? Ooh. There might actually be a real werewolf around here. This guy doesn't seem to believe in it. He thinks the people are lying, but we know better. If we stay here for too long, we might run into the werewolf ourselves too, so... Let's get going. If we keep going above, we can actually go directly to the Lake of Cleansing here, without going to another question mark first. The Champ de Soleil. Mike oh! Martin wrote about, gotta be. Nice place. Pretty as hell. We've been here before. I remember because I was saying how this place was named Trouble, but like the E and the U were backward. And then there were some bandits standing on the side here, talking about how they were trying to split the loot. Oh, and the swords I dropped last time are still here. Cool. What does that say? Holy Lake. Do I just hop in? Well, there's certainly something there. Oh, but this time, it's just people throwing their stuff down here. Not like a special trial or anything. Merton's last letter. My road has reached its end. I, Merton, having been given as a child to members of the Manticore Guild of Witchers, having been subjected to their vile mutations and refashioned by their destructive regime of training, do this day cease to be a witcher. I have finished my pilgrimage and divested myself of all that tied me to my old life. I have journeyed to the hidden chapel in the Cave of Tribulations and survived. Today, I am born anew. Here, in the Lake of Cleansing, I leave behind the last of the items which signify my attachment to my previous incarnation as a witcher. Along with them, I leave behind my cares, my grievances, and my obligations. I cast off all that I was, including my name. From now on, I shall answer to Shavel. I am a new man. Thank you, most redoubtable Lebiota. I feel my new self pushing me onward to new lands and places which remain hidden from me. The good folk who helped me during my journey always said I must listen to my inner voice and follow it, for it is through that inner voice that Lebiota speaks to us. I shall not go against its will. I will set off north to Temeria, Edern, perhaps even the Dragon Mountains. I will proclaim the glory of Lebiota and do good deeds. Just as the prophet commanded. Ah. And there's a lot of material items down here too. People casting away all the material things they owned in their previous life. Merton's last stop. Did someone just talk? Oh, maybe like a random hag or something? Well, if Merton is happy like this, then I'm happy for him. No witcher has ever asked to become a witcher because they wanted it. So we can really only choose how we react to this event later on. Some people, like Geralt, maybe they grow to like it and they embrace the role of a witcher. Other people? Maybe not so much, and that's totally fine too. What wouldn't be so good is if Merton stayed as a witcher despite hating it. So it's good that he found a solution here. Although I forget, what was the initial reason that he went to jail for again? Let's go! Because if I remember right, the whole reason why he became a Prophet Lebiota follower is because he met some sort of um a prophet, a reverend, at the prison. And they were talking all day long, and that's how all this came about. Draconid nest. Need to destroy it. Forktail! Ah, uh, that stench. 
We're fine. Alright. Simple enough. Do four tails normally smell, or was Geralt talking about something else in particular? Oh. Better get out. I like how Erendite glows. It makes it really pretty. Ooh, this Forktail has been killing people. Okay, that's it for this question mark here. If we look back on the map... I believe there is a castle thingy nearby. Yeah, we should definitely check it out, shouldn't we? Because, even though there's nothing there right now, that's probably just because we haven't looked at it yet. It's pretty close by anyway, so... Let's go. Roach. Sometime today. Chances are, it's gonna be some kind of abandoned castle. Bless your forest. Elven ruins? Slower. The Namebi Temple Ruins. We've never been here before, but usually temple ruins would be part of quests, right? So should I really be going in here right now, or saving this for later on? Well, we're here anyway. Oh. Did I get the key somewhere already? Recipe! Uh-oh. I think I made someone very mad. Recipes? Am I looking at a kitchen? Crayfish? Reminds me of that one inn whose specialty was crayfish. Etoile Blanche. Is that a, I believe, White Star? White Star Pasta. That was definitely highlighted red though, right? So... It might be something we need later on for a specific quest. But we've stumbled upon it before we found the quest. Like we do pretty often. Maybe someone's gonna be like, Help! Can you please help me retrieve some recipes I have at some elven ruins that we can't go to because there's monsters around here. Oh! Did you get mad because I took your recipes? Oh no. Spectre oil. Ah! No! This lady didn't come out until I opened that recipe box, so I feel like she might have been related to the recipes, somehow. Maybe she was the original person who made it. But yeah, I think maybe later on we're gonna get a quest and they're gonna be like, Hey, please help me find the recipes! And it's gonna be really cool, cause I'm gonna be like, I've already been there, and I've already got it right here. <laughs> Hoping that's the case anyway. Either way, it did seem like it should have been important. We'll learn more about it later on. Stench. Yeah, what's Geralt talking about? The stench. The wolves? Dead people? Or what? There is a cave here. Ooh! Whoa, 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 everybody. Let's calm down. Thank you.
Now do I have to go inside the den? To get rid of the wolves? Once and for all? This seems like a really big cave. Ooh. We can do this. Ow! Oh, art is always the best in this kind of situation. No question about it. Look at this! One step! That's always what we need. This is a wolf den. How do we get rid of a wolf den for good? Do they necessarily have like a little pile that we can bomb? Like for other monsters? I think we found the werewolf that the journal was talking about. My god. I like that silver. Ooh. Well, that wasn't too bad. We're kind of at the point where most monsters are pretty easy to fight, so even though it was a werewolf, that didn't really pose too much of a challenge. Kinda of feel bad though, because that was probably an actual person. In fact, it was. But we never got to see the humanoid form. Oh, how do you say this person's name? Giselle Durette? Is it a man or a woman? Actually, would we be able to tell if a werewolf is a woman? I'm not sure. Many pages of the journal are filled, but the last is dirtied and written in a chaotic hand. It is done. Countess de Sagor has bought Bassane Farm, and after so many years, we have to leave our comfortable abode. When Hubert received the eviction notice, he flew into such a rage, it took a great deal for me to calm him. I explained it was already a miracle we'd been able to live so long among men. I fear Hubert will prove unable to control his transformations while he is in such a state. Oh, it sounds like there's multiple werewolves here. We've moved into a cave in the Blesher Forest. They allowed us to take a few possessions from the farm. We have a bed, a table, and some candles. Things aren't so bad. The cave is a bit damp, sure. And one night in, I can already tell it will play havoc with my joints. Huber had an attack when he heard me cough. He screamed he would return to the farm and sink his teeth into the countess. I have a bad feeling. Hubert has disappeared. I'm terrified. Shivers run down my spine. I can taste blood in my mouth. I fear Hubert has gone off to kill. What will become of us if he loses all control? The remaining pages are torn out, claw marks visible on the back cover. Oh no. These people originally lived on the farm, but they got evicted by the Countess. Well, that's kind of crummy to make them live in a cave like this too. Were there really no accommodations that they could be given? Maybe some money. When they get evicted, do they just get a notice saying, Hey, okay, you gotta get out of here within 24 hours, and that's it? Or do they also get some kind of monetary sum? Monetary compensation? I'm guessing it's probably something closer to the former. No compensation at all, and that's why they were so angry about this. Well, according to the other journal we came across, Hubert probably killed some other people, and perished himself. And now I've come in and killed... his friend? Or partner here? Oh no... We didn't get to hear them talk at all. Hmm... Okay... We can go directly to... Night for Hire? But I wonder about this place here. Have we ever been there before? There's some like random houses and stuff. Yeah, we can go check it out. Can we see it from here? There's definitely something across the river over there. Elven ruins. 
Oh, it seems like this might be part of the elven ruins too. A broken bridge. If we cross it... Can we actually find something, or is this getting to end-of-world territory? The women will be restless. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, we could fast travel, but let's just go back down to the Night for Hire here. They put that in the distance that you can look at, but you can't actually reach it. Makes me a little bit sad. All right, Roach. Let's head off to the night contract. Hello? That's it, Roach. Abandoned site. Oh, this is the farm in question. The same farm. Where the Countess evicted a bunch of people who turned out to be werewolves. And they got angry and came back and killed everybody. Is there anybody here? Oh, shoot, the werewolf is still here right now. Oh, no. This is Hubert. Oh, oh. That seems like a random lady, not a bandit or anything. Why'd you kill her? Oh, maybe that was the Countess? Oh, but you killed somebody, so there was no choice. We had to kill you. And he also attacked us on site too, so... There wasn't really much room for discussion here. Whenever you see abandoned site, you would expect Oh, is it a giant group of bandits or ghouls? But no, it's a singular werewolf. Eviction notice. Here we go. To Hubert and Yassel Durrett. In connection with my recent acquisition of the Bassane farm, I, the undersigned, count this Tefane Baudet de Sacor, do hereby inform Sirs Hubert and Giselle Durrett. Oh, they're both men. I thought it was a woman. Who currently inhabit said piece of real estate, that they are obliged to vacate the premises within no more than seven days of receiving this notice. In the case of failure to comply with this warning, the matter will be referred to the appropriate enforcement bodies. This is a legally binding notice and has been prepared in accordance with the Act on Bassane Farm issued by the Beauclair Magistrate. Sincerely, Countess Tefane Baudet de Sacor. Oh. Wait, so how does this work anyway? This lady recently bought the piece of land, so were these people squatting here? Because no one was living here anyway, or... Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably the case, because they probably weren't rich enough to actually own this piece of land here. It was an abandoned site, so they decided to move in, but then the Countess... Didn't realize that she was messing with a bunch of werewolves. Is it over but what's then? really, really sad is Thank that you, the one who ended up killing both the werewolves was actually me. <laughs> Especially the not Hubert one, because Hubert was killing people, but the other one was just kind of in the den, and I stormed in and killed him too. There is a barber here. Don't get to see these guys very often. They say Starks bring babies. They do. Hey there, Witcher. Come, we must speak. Did I rescue you? The werewolf. <laughs> Did you kill it? Mm -hmm. It murdered folk, devoured sheep, ravaged the farm. Oh, what a relief that's done with. I thank you. If you wish, I shall give you a trim. I just need a moment. My hands are still shaking. Mm, to the average people here, it's a good thing that we got rid of the werewolves. What's a barber do on a farm like this? He shears sheep, 
because sheep are calm, unlikely to scream at him if a lock is out of place or a color a touch off the desired shade. <laughs> and here, no one threatens to shorten you by a head if you trim a bit too much. Somebody threatened to do that to you? To me? No, but, well, one hears things. I found it impossible to work under incessant pressure. When I saw the notice, urgent specialist sheep shearer sought, well, I didn't give it a second thought. And it was pleasant at first, but then that werewolf appeared. Hmm, that city life isn't for everybody. I'm glad you found a place you like better, and I'm even more glad that you can continue living here now. I wonder if people normally know that a werewolf is a human. Well, not is a human, but, you know, it's like a half-wolf, half-human thing. Probably, right? But maybe he doesn't care too much. We'll get a nice shave. I think it's been like 20 years since we got one. Dang, look at how young I look. Haircut, though? These are all the same ones that we had before, right? So I guess it's okay. Thank you, though. Yeah, I think so. All these descriptions seem familiar. Take care now. For you, Witcher, that werewolf. <gasps> My, he'd have devoured us all. Would he, or would he have just killed the Countess? Which it seems like he did when we came here. There was a singular body that he was feeding off of. A woman's body. <laughs> Dumb plowed sorcerer, like to be planning to witch our kids away. <laughs> well, in any case, this we probably did a good thing here. Bassane Farm. Contrary to appearances, Dusan does not live and die by the wine trade alone. It also exports valuable building materials and a great quantity of wool. The clover-rich slopes of Montcron provide sustenance to a broad variety of sheep, including the famed Toussaint Merinos, whose fleece fetches mind-boggling sums. Bassane is one of the estates specializing in the breeding and pasteurizing of these remarkable beasts. Still owned by the same countess? Maybe not. Okay, well there's one more here. Why don't we just continue westward then? And then there's a little house over there, which I don't believe we've been to yet. If you hadn't come, they'd still be wetting their britches with fear. We really should be following quests, not question marks though, because question marks are more like side things. So once we're done this little area here, let me go find a concrete quest to be focusing on. Damn, something seriously wrong here. Olive Grove? Should I be worried? Prepared? Seems okay so far. Nobody here. Oh, so much armor dye. Thank you. And then upstairs. I never noticed Quen was so loud. It makes those little electricity noises. Hmm. This place is called Olive Grove. And nobody is here. No. No. Vampire oil? Black blood. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on me. Leave me alone. Oh, are you actually a hooded woman? I thought you were a Brooksa. What happened here? What? Uh... Sir Christoph Duggery's diary. My beloved Seraphine has a lover. I'm not going to rend my garments, curse the gods or swear vengeance. My Seraphine brims with so much life energy. It was inevitable some would spill over to the other canals. It is now up to me to cut off those spillways, vanquish my rival and hope the walls I erect will prove sufficient to satisfy her vitality and give us a life of mutual exuberance. 
I have already forgiven her. Now I need but meet her bow and remove him from our life. Oh, why forgive her or just split apart? Yesterday, I followed Seraphine. They hold their trysts at the olive grove, right here. How romantic. When they met, birds flew over the grove. A whole flock, twittering and chirping, as if celebrating the lover's joy. And as if mocking me cruelly. How symbolic. I can see this romance drain my darling wife. Since she began seeing this... her lover. She has become anemic, eternally pale. She wanders the house at night aimlessly, blindly. She used to be so lively, so radiant. Yet now she is listless, apathetic, resigned. I must gather my courage and then their relationship as soon as possible. I, Christophe Duggery, despise violence. I shall resolve the matter of my wife's lover pragmatically. I have prepared a full sack of Nilfgaardian florins, one so heavy I can barely lift it. I shall wait for my Seraphine to return from the grove to our residence, and then I shall catch him and make him an offer he cannot refuse. Saint Lebiota, give me strength. So why is he dead? He came here to meet the lover and offer him money to leave the wife. But the problem was that the lover is probably a vampire, right? Oh, whoa! <laughs> oh, you took a while in playing your tricks! I thought you were Seraphine. But you were the lover in disguise. A little bit strange though, to be honest, because why would you give me an opportunity to read the journal to figure out who you are first? <laughs> Do you want to bite my blood? I'll let you. I have black blood. I like that silver. You're so good at dodging. What the heck? Why won't you die? Seriously! Don't touch Roach, I swear! Oh! Got the animation, but not the kill. One last little bit. Oh, what? Freaking bomb her and get it over with. There we go. Didn't even get to see her fall. I took black blood this time, but you didn't bother biting me. Gosh dang it. Letter from a lover. My darling girl, I cannot wait until we meet again. My nights are restless, my head full of thoughts of you and only you. If someone had told me, but a few months prior, such a viral and burning passion would bind me to another woman, I would have laughed in their face. But now, now my only desire is to be close to you. Christoph is beginning to suspect something, yet I have hope my reassurances will quell his worries. I would not like to hurt him, if possible. He is a good man, warm-hearted and honest, but the fire which once burned between us has extinguished. I know you understand this, and am delighted I can be honest with you. Till we can meet again, it cannot be too soon. Please, Zymina, take care. Yours lovingly, devotedly, undyingly, Seraphine. Ah... Wait, so Kristoff didn't even get close enough to the whole thing to realize that Seraphine was seeing a woman. And where's Seraphine now? Guessing she's probably dead because the Bruxa was sucking on her blood all day long. So every single person involved in this is dead now. Wonderful. So I guess the Bruxa must be a higher vampire too, huh? Not as high as that Laugh and Regis probably, but high enough to be able to seduce Seraphine. 
Because I'm guessing they at least talked, right? They were writing letters to each other and stuff. Actually, I do wonder, do we know if Bruxas have the power of persuasion? Or was this Bruxa so beautiful that Seraphine willingly fell in love with her? Panastri's Hermitage. Oh, a hermitage. Give me peace, please. What makes you insist on me as your victim? Why choose me to torment? Be gone, foul spirit. Panastri. Hello? What's going on here? This is like a druid's grove? The Flagellant's Manifesto. There's a kitty here, mad at me. Fellow sons and daughters of Lebiota, the end is nigh. Mend your ways and put your faith in the good tome. For our prophet has written, To shun the pleasures of the flesh and shirk from comfort is at times recommended, and to value one's neighbor's fortune above one's own comfort is commendable. That is why we, the Eighth-day Flagellants, scourge ourselves and torment our flesh to ensure all folk of the world enjoy long and prosperous lives. Whatever evil, sickness, or misconduct lurks in this world's dark corners survives not because we have been negligent in striking our backs with a whip. Oh. There's some kind of masochistic gang here? The Eighth-day Flagellants? Maybe it's related to the woman's worries. You're tormented. By what? Whips. Forgive me, but I must ask directly. Are you a man? I... I no longer trust my senses. I'm a witcher. Not exactly. I'm a witcher. Quite a few folk think I don't deserve to be classified as a member of the human species. Know some personally. A witcher? But no. Nor can you help me. We'll see. Just tell me what the problem is. A foulness, a demon or wraith, haunts me. Grants me no rest. It wants something. I sense this, but know not what. Each day it appears, tarries, then leaves. It's here now, there, beyond the trees. Don't see a thing. Of course not. It cannot be seen. Yet you see it? Only when I drink the brew, which brings a pain to my head. Nausea. But I endure these to keep an eye on the wraith, my tormentor. What? Why don't you just not drink it so you can't see it? Out of sight, out of mind. This demon of yours, can you describe it? It is an enormous horse. Its hoofbeats pounding in the dark. It gallops to me, stops, stares, then runs on. Sure it's not just a wild horse, run of the mill? The creature is not of this world. When it gazes at me, a terrible chill pervades my soul. It is evil condensed. Its eyes black, void. Each time it comes, terror grips me. I cease what I'm doing, still my breath and heart. Well, this sounds like something that should be up my alley. I'm a witcher. I deal with this kind of stuff. What's your brew made of? Gotta wonder what's causing such strong visions. You drop in some mushroom, jumper tub, dancing doolap? Close. The common grey top. I see you know your herbs. Grey top? Variety's extinct, if I recall correctly. Nearly. But not quite. I was able to grow a few from dried spores. I'd hoped a brew of Grey Top would reveal this nightmare. I was not wrong. As far as I know, Grey Top produces some powerful side effects. Though it can, in fact, reveal the hidden, the immaterial. Yes, I see the evil. Better that than to know it is there, but not know where. No, in your case, I would rather just try to forget about it. <laughs> Stop taking drugs. Problem will go away on its own. <laughs> Fine. You seem sure something's out there. I'll see what I can do. Start by taking a look around. I mean, I feel like I should be trying to take the potion too, if I want to see what you're seeing. Oh. Dead 
scented moths, attracted to some ghosts like to the light of a candle. Hmm. Seems there's at least some truth to the hermit's ravings. Dead moths. Common gray top. Strong hallucinogen. Thought extinct. Don't often get to see that. Extinct! Drops of blood on the pillow. Trail of him leading to the window. Oh. And we have to go outside? Oh, this window. Shutters closed tight. Need to check the other side, see if the trail continues. It seems like there was something on that side too. Dead moths. Attracted to some ghosts like to the light of a candle. Is that like a European legend? Moths being attracted to ghosts? In Asian legends, moths are reincarnations of recently departed spirits. Dead moths. Attracted to some ghosts like to the light of a candle. Oh. I'm dead on my feet. Tired as the grave. Hold on, lady. I'll figure this out for you. Seems like this lady keeps a wolf, too. That wolf we saw just now wasn't wild. Trail of blood starts at the pillow, ends here. Medallion's still vibrating. You were very near to it. It looked at you, then galloped into the woods. Something drinks the hermit's blood at night. That I know. Gotta talk to her. Maybe she can tell me something more. A vampire? But she said it was like a horse. Witcher. Oh, we're gonna ask her about the flagellant thing? Heard flagellants whip themselves to atone for all humankind's wrongs. To appease the gods, gain their forgiveness. That why you do it? We've each our own reasons. I seek to atone for the suffering of a living being, which once fell victim to another's vanity. I care not for humankind, preferring instead the company of animals. That's why she lives out here all on her own. But yet, somebody's still tormenting her. Most likely some kind of wraith's tormenting you. Can't tell what kind, though. Felt weak? Spent lately? Notice bite marks on your skin? As I said, I feel weaker by the day. And bites. Of course, there are lice and midges here aplenty. This isn't lice. Something much bigger drinks your blood while you sleep. But Ew. I do not sleep. Not a wink. He's always present. Always watching. I cannot bear it any longer. Sadly, not much I can do. Can't exterminate it if I can't see it. The Grey Top. I shall make a brew of it for you. I've two mushrooms left. Enough for one dose. Perhaps then you'll see what I do. Oh, uh, wouldn't be the first time I tried taking drugs. This mushroom, even in me, could produce some nasty, unpredictable side effects. True. There is no knowing how Great Top would affect a mutated body. I'll probably be okay. Hmm. A proper brew could be our only chance to figure this out. Her description of what she's giving me? Sounds like it should be a vampire. Something biting her, taking her blood, making her weaker by the day. It sounds a lot like Kristoff's description of Seraphine, actually. But not quite exactly, because the drugs and all? And it doesn't seem to be visible. Alright, high time we tried this. If I start muttering something about unicorns or sorceresses, ignore it. <laughs> That's gonna become a self-fulfilling prophecy.
Doesn't taste good, I take it? Whoa! Ooh! That might be the first time I've seen Geralt make that kind of face. No, this isn't real. Let's be on guard. <sighs> Don't see no wraith. Wow, this clover's amazing. Now that's what I call a bouquet. Who said that? Oh, you're awake. Had me worried. You were out way too long. Uh. Even considered giving you some white honey. Kinda hard to do with hooves, though. Roach? What? <laughs> Hold on, what? Your voice. It's, uh, interesting. Gotta say, I expected a young mare to sound, uh, girlish. Based on what? Your vast experience with talking animals? Far as I know, I'm your first. Good point. <laughs> uh, talking horses. Okay. This is all a drug, right? Must be the brew that did this. Interesting side effect. Great, isn't it? You should take this stuff more often. Got so many pointers I could give you. Can't, sadly. Drinking this too often could prove fatal. Am I just making this up in my head? Or has Roach always been trying to communicate to me this whole time? Now I'm wondering. Hey, know how you always show up when I whistle? How's that work exactly? Well, you're my human. Gotta be there when you need me. Yes, I'll be there for you, ooh, ooh, as the world falls down. <laughs> oh. Oh. Still kind of strange how you cross the ocean when I call sometimes, but then get hung up on the tiniest <laughs> fence. What's that about? Uh, what can I say? Everyone's got limits. I appreciate you trying all the same. Listen, got this contract I need to finish before the brew wears off. Right. Monster won't slay itself. Let me see. First up, I need to know what we're dealing with. Follow me, and try not to trample any plants or small animals. Has Roach's personality always been like this? She's taking charge. Geralt, we gotta inspect this area closely. I'll look for clues. You stand there and... Well, just stand. Right. <laughs> Will you look at that? What'd you find? Don't see anything here. These are hoof prints. Not just any old horses either. These were left by an astral being. Or the worldly. We gotta follow them. So equine phantoms? Ghost horses? Dead moths often mean a phantom's nearby. Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> now, what about the smell? Same whiff I caught at the cemetery in Vizima when we were hunting ghouls. Oh! The smell of death! <laughs> Smells normal to me. Not taking me for a ride, are you? Uh. Seriously? <laughs> Did you see how Roach posed a little bit when she said, the smell of death? Love it. Alright. Now I know what we're up against. That quickly? Right, Geralt. Let's sum up what we know so far. Uh. We're dealing with some kind of wraith or phantom, most likely. It visits the hermit at night, drinks her blood. Even if we manage to find it, I've got no idea how I could possibly fight it. Geralt, please, I got this. It's definitely an Umbra, an immaterial wraith. This one's assumed the form of a horse. An Umbra? Actually makes sense. Umbra are completely invisible, even to witchers. But how can you be sure? Because it's not invisible to me, doofus. It's right over there. Oh! What? I can see it now because of the drug. It's getting away! Come on, witcher! Hop in the saddle! Gotta catch it! <laughs> what the heck is going on? 
Oh, Roche, let's go! There's the Umbra! Let's go, Geralt! After it! Yeah! Okay! Hey! Gotta save my strength a bit. No telling how long we're gonna need to keep running. Oh, you got the best saddle in the whole country, Roche. Come on. I know you can do this. Geralt, we gotta have a man to horse talk. No offense, but your riding skills, they leave a bit to be desired, buddy. What? You'd really do me a solid if you could uh, apply a slightly shorter hand, be a little more decisive about where you want me to go. <sighs> Sometimes I got no idea, buddy. Do I go left, right, twerk where I'm standing? <laughs> and it'd be great if you could respond more fluidly to my commands. Hey, heard this one? Horse walks into a tavern, and the innkeeper says, Hey, pal, why the long face? <laughs> Ooh! Sorry, boars. Let's go. Let's not lose sight of that umbra. Can you see it now? Yeah, it's right there. Run, Roach. What the fuck do you think I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> potty mouth. Roach is a potty mouth. You're out of stamina. Come on, Roach. Keep going. I've been staring at the umbra's back the whole time. As long as we're being candid, I gotta ask. Why do you sometimes buck me off in the middle of a fight? Yeah. First I've heard. Don't recall that ever happening. Of course you don't. <laughs> what about the times when you start running on your two legs? <gasps> Melted into thin air. It's right there. Whoa, whoa. Apparition. Oh, fuck. Geralt, watch out. Oh god, they're fast! Good gods! That's where the overgrown demon cats! Help! <laughs> Stand in place, Roach! I'll handle this! Oh god, there's more! I gotta keep killing them until the health bar is gone. I guess. There we go. You okay, Roach? I'm guessing that's a yes. Some kind of glowy magic thing going on with this tombstone. We should check it out. All right. It's just a sword. Marcello Clerici, knight, died last year, was more or less the same age as our hermit. Seems his spirit's become a horse-shaped umbra that's tormenting Panastri. Why are you telling me this? I can read and draw my own <laughs> conclusions. Thinking aloud, that's all, helps me focus. Embarrassing, Geralt. Getting called out on all of your talking to yourself habits. Geralt, it's the Umbra! Attack! Let me explain! Talk, but make it fast. Why are you tormenting the Hermit? She torments me! Refuses to forgive me! I'm denied peace in the afterlife, and it's all her doing! Each day I come and beg her for clemency. Beg her for clemency? You drink her blood, drive her mad with fear. I don't know how to explain it, but yes! A monstrous force takes me. Though I also know I'll not have peace till the day Pinastri forgives me. What'd you do to her? You and the Hermit, how do you know each other? We met as babes, grew up side by side. I... I loved her. Yet she was always sad, nothing could cheer her. The world terrified her. I thought her gloom came from being poor. So I did my damnness to take us from our village, make us a better life elsewhere. Became a squire, took her with me to the palace. But Panastri soon learned nobles are no more decent than peasants, not a speck. 
Once even I'd grown vile to her eyes, she fled the palace and joined the flagellants. I left the court to be near her, yet she cast me off. Said she didn't want to know me. <laughs> Roach, listen! When the whip bearers proved too hard-hearted for her too, she became a hermit. I see it clearly now, though I never understood her while alive. From the grave's dark depth, the living are bright, sharp flares. You see all their thoughts at once? Now I understand why she had to cast me off. Mm, she's full of rage. Probably what turned you into an Umbra. Well, now that you explain it like that, maybe if she understands that forgiving you will relieve herself of all of this madness, she'll be okay with it. Why take the form of a horse? A horse? What do you mean? Each day since I died, a power lifts me from my grave and, and makes me run. Then I return with blood in my mouth. Oh, wow. I don't know what this is, how it comes to pass, but I do know the torment will continue until she forgives me. <laughs> Geralt is yawning! He's not listening! But she sees me as a horse, you say? Seems so. Same way I saw you. Must have hurt her something awful if she refuses to forgive you. Would rather see you suffer. What did you do? To her? Nothing. But my horse, I... I, I flogged it to death. Oh. Pinastri, she saw this. Unforgivable. A proud stallion, my blaze. But he was a bucker, and tossed me during a tourney, one I'd wanted to win badly. Pinastri had been so glad they'd let me stand. Me, a peasant's son. I wanted to win it for her. But that horse made me lose. Rage overcame me. I struck and struck until at last he fell. Wow. I wouldn't forgive you either. Oh, the regret. I beg you, forgive me. Absolve me in Blaze's very name. Yeah, you're barking up the wrong tree here. Can't forgive you for that. Not in my power. But your horse could? Please, I'd do anything. I'm desperate. H help me. Noble Mare, forgive me my <laughs> sin. Uh... If forgiving him will relieve the druid of her problems, then we should do it anyway. But I thought that you would want the druid to forgive you. And your horse. Yeah, but also the druid. Eh, Roach, do whatever you want. Could free his spirit, pardoning him on behalf of his horse. But you shouldn't do it if you don't think he deserves forgiveness. Did a rotten thing. Got no excuse. Your horse was loyal. Did the best damn job he could. Cause that's how we horses are. True. I know I deserved what befell me. But we aren't vengeful, don't hold grudges, don't dwell on being left in monster-infested woods. <laughs> so, in your poor Blaze's name, I forgive you. Oh, thank you. I feel it's incredible. Such relief, such lightness. <laughs> All right then. Guess we might as well head back. Penastri's nights ought to be ghost tree from now on. Anything to add, Geralt? Nope. Let's go see her. But as the effects of the drugs wear off, 
I guess our journey will come to an end. <laughs> I'm not even riding her. <laughs> Phantom's gone. Shouldn't torment you ever again. I felt a change. I did. As if I'd been released from a cramped dunk cellar. I had come to believe no one could help me. I'm grateful, Witcher. I'm well aware Witchers work for hire. For pay. But I've no coin, alas. I can offer only this. Potatoes. A good Ooh! crop this year. Exceptional. Excellent. Ought to thank my horse, actually. Phantom's departure? Mostly Roach's doing. Then I thank you too, noble creature. Gotta admit, easy peasy with our powers combined. So, what now? We hit the path? Ride to the nearest notice board? Rustle up another contract? Exactly. No oh, effects of the bruise waning. I can feel it. Won't be able to understand you soon. Ah, that's horseshit. I, mean, <laughs> I got so much more I want to tell you. And... <laughs> oh, clever beasts, horses. Farewell, Witcher. Oh. 